Indoor air quality, IAQ, is crucial for a healthy living environment, as indoor pollution poses significant health risks. The World Health Organization attributes 3.8 million deaths annually to household air pollution, which contributes to respiratory infections, COPD, and lung cancer deaths. Poor IAQ is a major risk for adults and children, particularly those with asthma. The U.S. EPA estimates that 6 million children in the U.S. with asthma are vulnerable to worsened symptoms from indoor pollutants. The average person spends 90% of their time indoors, with children, the elderly, and those with chronic illnesses spending even more. Indoor air can be two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and up to 100 times worse in poorly ventilated spaces. This underscores the urgent need to improve IAQ to safeguard health. Indoor air quality monitors are essential tools for assessing and improving the air we breathe indoors. This article delves into how these devices measure key parameters, such as total volatile organic compounds, TVOC, formaldehyde, HCHO, air quality index, AQI, CO2 carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and humidity levels. We'll also explore the acceptable and safe ranges for these parameters, their significance, and what to do to make your home safer. Here are some of the pollutants that are monitored by these devices. Total Volatile Organic Compounds, TVOC. TVOCs are a group of organic chemicals that easily vaporize at room temperature. Common sources include cleaning products, paints, adhesives, and furniture. High levels of TVOCs can cause headaches, dizziness, and long-term respiratory issues. Acceptable range. Below 0.5 mg per cubic meter is considered safe while levels exceeding 1 mg per cubic meter indicate poor air quality. How to mitigate exposure. Increase ventilation by opening windows or using exhaust fans, use low VOC or VOC-free products, and store chemicals and paints in sealed containers away from living areas. Formaldehyde, HCHO. Formaldehyde is a common indoor pollutant released by building materials, pressed wood products, and some textiles. It is a known carcinogen and can cause irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat, even at low levels. Acceptable range. Below 0.08 ppm, parts per million, is safe for prolonged exposure. Levels above 0.1 ppm are considered harmful. How to mitigate exposure. Opt for furniture and building materials certified as low emission or formaldehyde-free, increase ventilation, and maintain indoor humidity levels between 40 to 60% to reduce off-gassing. Carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2 is a naturally occurring gas produced by respiration and combustion processes. Elevated indoor CO2 levels are often a sign of poor ventilation, which can cause drowsiness, reduced cognitive function, and discomfort. Acceptable range. Levels below 1,000 ppm are generally acceptable for indoor spaces. Levels between 1,000 to 2,000 ppm may cause discomfort, and levels above 2,000 ppm can significantly impair concentration and well-being. How to mitigate exposure. Improve ventilation by opening windows or using mechanical ventilation systems and monitor CO2 levels in crowded spaces. Carbon monoxide, CO. CO is a colorless, odorless gas produced by incomplete combustion from sources like gas stoves, furnaces, and vehicles. It is highly toxic and can cause headaches, dizziness, and even death at high concentrations. Acceptable range. CO levels should remain below 9 ppm over an 8-hour average, with no single exposure exceeding 35 ppm in an hour. How to mitigate exposure. Ensure proper maintenance of combustion appliances, install CO detectors in key areas, and avoid using fuel-burning devices in poorly ventilated spaces. The AQI is a standardized metric used to represent the overall air quality, incorporating multiple pollutants such as ozone, particulate matter, and carbon monoxide. The scale ranges from 0 to 500, with lower values indicating better air quality. Good, 0 to 50. Moderate, 51 to 100. Unhealthy for sensitive groups, 101 to 150. Unhealthy. 151 to 200. Very unhealthy. 
201 to 300. Hazardous, 301 to 500. Particulate matter is a mixture of solid and liquid particles suspended in the air. These particles vary in size and can have different health effects. PM 1.0. Particles smaller than 1 micrometer, such as combustion particles and certain pathogens. These can penetrate deep into the lungs and enter the bloodstream, causing cardiovascular and respiratory issues. PM 2.5. Particles smaller than 2.5 micrometers, including fine dust, smoke, and aerosols. Prolonged exposure can lead to chronic respiratory diseases, asthma, and reduced lung function. PM10. Particles smaller than 10 micrometers, such as pollen, mold spores, and larger dust particles. These primarily affect the upper respiratory tract, causing irritation and allergic reactions. Acceptable levels. PM2.5. Below 12 UGM3 micrograms per cubic meter is considered safe. PM10. Below 50 UGM3 is the recommended limit. How to mitigate exposure. Use high-efficiency particulate air filters in HVAC systems or portable air purifiers. Reduce indoor sources of particulates, for example, smoking, burning candles, and clean surfaces regularly to minimize dust accumulation. Humidity plays a significant role in maintaining a comfortable and healthy indoor environment. ASHRAE American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers recommends maintaining indoor relative humidity between 40% and 60%. Why this range? Low humidity, less than 40%, can cause dry skin, irritation of the eyes and throat, and increased susceptibility to respiratory infections. High humidity, greater than 60%, promotes the growth of mold, mildew, and dust mites, which can trigger allergies and asthma. Maintaining this balance helps ensure comfort and minimizes health risks associated with poor humidity control. Indoor air quality monitors provide invaluable insights into the air we breathe, helping us identify and mitigate potential health risks. By understanding key parameters like TVOC, formaldehyde, CO2, carbon monoxide, AQI, particulate matter, and humidity, we can take proactive steps to improve indoor environments for better health and well-being. Regular monitoring and adhering to recommended ranges ensure a safer, more comfortable living and working space. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.